So, Kareem, this literally just got approved a few hours ago by both boards. Why the agglomeration? Why the merger? Thank you for having me. The merger is predicated on uh, three parameters. One, there will be an increasing um, relevance of use cases that intersect between satellite communication and geospatial analytics. Case in point is the Drift X event that is underway in Abu Dhabi, where we are witnessing a number of uh, autonomous platform, air, sea, and land, and where we're seeing satellite communication and geo, uh, geospatial analytics converging. Two is because the technologies in space are going to converge, and so operating them together makes more and more sense. And last but not least, to your point, is that artificial intelligence is going to be a foundational element of um, serving customers across the entire uh, satellite spectrum. What does the merger mean for the UAE's position in the global space race, let's say? Well, first of all, it positioned the UAE as a space-faring space nation, uh, in my mind. And certainly, it is the merger as a reflection of, first, the, the UAE National Space Strategy um, 2030 and the National Strategy for uh, Artificial Intelligence 2031. So in a sense, what we are doing is very consistent with um, the leadership vision as to what you want to do. And also, in a sense, um, a continuation of the partnerships that we at Space42 will be pursuing with best-in-class technology partners in the world, uh, whether it's in Europe or in the US. So very, very consistent with, with the trajectory of the nation. Kareem, a few words just on the financials. I presume you'll stay listed. What will the dividend policy be, for example? And might you be looking at, you know, taking on more companies, making more acquisitions? Our thought process is threefold here as to how we intend to use our capital. First, we will continue to invest in developing our existing business. Uh, in technology, you need to continue to adapt and evolve. Two, to your point, there is going to be a number of cases where there will be opportunity to add uh, complementary capabilities and, and a number of these conversations are underway. And equally important, and uh, the third lever is to re return money to the shareholders in the form of dividends. So in, in our mind, these um, three parameters go together. And at the end of the day, this is going to be a discussion between the management and the board. But certainly, that's the way we're thinking about uh, the use of capital. Can you give us any more color on those conversations, Kareem? Are they local companies? Are they US? Are they China-based? So certainly all our partners are based in Europe, uh, to the case Airbus and Thales, and in the US, the likes of Boeing and SpaceX. And, and that's the trajectory that we will continue pursuing. In, in space, there are a handful of uh, global champions, uh, based on my experience over the past two decades, and, and these are some of the names um, with whom we're, we're ongoing, we're partnering uh, on an ongoing basis. Is there a relationship with the China space program still? There had been, and there was a, a memorandum of understanding signed, as I understand it, but perhaps that's not the case now. Maybe there was some U.S. opposition? Uh, in the case of Yesat and Bainat, this the single-minded focus on working with partners in Europe and the U.S. So in the case of Bainat, there was an announcement, um, if my memory serves well, in 2023, where we teamed up with ISI, a Finnish firm, to deploy um, a sort of a, a, an advanced generation of geospatial um, uh, spacecraft. And in the case of YASA, they've announced last year um, a number of programs. One, one of them is already underway through AF4 uh, under the, the partnership with, uh, with Airbus, and two other programs are under uh, finalization with um, a similar partners in, based in Europe and in the U.S. So that's pretty much the single-minded focus of how we approach this. We do not have working relationship uh, with uh, uh, with China or or, um, or any comparable programs. This merger creates a mammoth company. It's an implied market cap of more than 15 billion AED. I'm curious as to how it might compare with the Saudi plans. We learned at Davos that Saudi wanted to make a big investment in space along with other technologies. Well, we're clear about, about our ambitions, and uh, we always sort of approach our, our ventures in space uh, with a mindset that no one has a monopoly in space. I think there, there is a lot of room in space for every nation to, to do uh, formidable work. 
And, and space at the same time is um, has a sovereignty dimension, so it matters for the UAE uh, to make sure that it has strong capabilities in space for civilian and uh, and commercial applications. So we will look at our program in this manner, and certainly we look forward to team up with other programs in the region, the Saudi as a case in point. What's the growth potential here, Karim? Well, um, for us, th there is no barriers to what you want to do. First, because you, you still have um, a very large segment in the world that remains unconnected, so our satellite communication capabilities can be brought to bear immediately. And when it comes to geospatial uh, analytics, the, the field is, is, is truly ex exploding. Uh, you could have um, compounded annual growth rates anywhere between 40 and 70 percent, depending on which segments you, you are serving. And so the, the, what is fantastic about bringing these two businesses together is, on the one hand, you bring a very stable base with proven technologies with a lot of legacy on the side of Bayonet satellite communication. And then you're merging this with uh, a high growth business in geospatial analytics uh, with Bayonet. And, and you have the best of both worlds. And that's exactly how we're approaching it. Mm. You know, it used to be the case that you'd get data and it would have to be sent back down to Earth in order to get analysed and parsed and so on. Now that can happen in orbit, Karim. Tell us about the challenges and also the potential for this kind of computer power or orbital computer power. You're absolutely right. The, 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 what is absolutely essential is to be able to extrapolate, analyse and interpret the data in the most efficient manner. And efficient is threefold. One. Can you do this uh, with the least uh, sort of lag time? Because uh, you need to sort of be able to respond to certain requirements. If you're driving a car and the car needs to know exactly what it has to do in the next 50 centimeters, you can't have high latencies. So this is one case. Two, you need to be able to do this with the least cost. And so if you're going to send the data, uh, the data is going to be captured in space, sent back to Earth, and then Earth sent to some other point to be interpreted and uh, analyzed and interpreted, that's not going to work. So cost optimization is going to matter. And last but not least, because of the, I think, the richness of the use cases before us, there isn't going to be a single source of data that's going to be able to fulfill the requirement of a use case, whether it's yes. in transport or tracking, what have you. And so the idea is what is the most efficient way to fuse information from different sources, whether terrestrial or aerial mm -hmm. or and so that's, I think, is, is going to bring the onus on us as technology operators. Yes. Uh, deploy in space almost cognitive capabilities that can provide us with the solutions immediately.